Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Hi, Viper Keeper here. Look where I am. I am at uh, uh, Reptile World uh, Serpentarium, the new home of Elvis and the Grim Reaper. So let's go in and visit with George and uh, uh, see Elvis and the Little Reaper and uh, the other animals which George, is, uh, George keeps here. Oh my, the Little Reaper has grown since he was born. Yeah, the time kind of yeah, this was my animal I sent it to George. Yeah, I think it's growing like a weed. Yeah, is he still as foul as ever? This was... Uh, I named him Little Reaper because he would... Uh, Grim Reaper because he would... He was aggressive, he would... Uh, even if you're trying to feed him, he would uh, lash out at you. Do everything in the shift box with this guy he is serious business. Uh, yeah, exactly. I see the King Cobra's in the shift box. Yeah, he's a little shy around. We we've been meeting to clean him, but so we opened it up uh, over the weekend to give him the opportunity to climb in, and he only just climbed in this morning. Ah, there's the little Reaper. Not so little anymore. He's about as the size of his father right now yeah. and mother. Yeah, I stopped breeding them because they were so hard to find homes for that really could handle them. Yeah. He's a lot calmer. He used to strike at, at my sight. You know, never did anything bad to, to the animal, of course, but he was always... Uh, just impossible to deal with. Well, here's Elvis being a little foul. We disturbed him in his trap box. We're trying to get him to go out into the exhibit. Go on, dude. This is how I do it. So I have this gentle, soft silicon poker. And I just give him a gentle little guide. Gentle little guide. After you, Elvis. After you, pal. Figures I, I get here and he's uncooperative as he normally is. There he goes. There he goes. Nice and easy, pal. Nice and gentle. There he is. He's out. All right. I'm going to shoot some video up front. Well, Elvis seems to be uncooperative today. <laughs> um, yeah, the color on this guy is just we shoot him out, and he's going back in his strap box. Well, there's there's Elvis, but he's not terribly cooperative. We tried to poke him out of his exhibit. I I basically blew my breath into the exhibit to uh, see if he recognized that because we've been face to face numerous times. Um, You know, I just don't know, uh, I just don't know if he's gonna come forward and recognize me. Uh, sorry folks, I was a little bit off the mark there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's too bad he's being very stubborn today. Come on, dude, come on out and visit. People wanna see you. Come on. That used to be my King Cobra. Oh, yeah? Yep. Uh, I sell some animals to George periodically. Um, I grew him from a hatchling about less than a foot long into a 14-foot monster. Come on, dude. Well, I had him in an enclosure that was a little, quite a bit smaller than this, maybe 
about two thirds the size, five feet by five feet. Uh, so he, you know, he outgrew that. And uh, George was looking for a king. Uh, uh, George was looking for a king, and uh, um, you know, I saw George at the Con Venom conference, and uh, uh, I said, "Yeah, I've got an animal for you." And we worked out the, the logistics, and I sent him down here to St. Cloud. Uh, um, I think in. 2021, and this is my first opportunity to come down and see him. I rate, he was hatched in 2010, and I've had him since then, so I was wondering if he would recognize me. Uh, these are very, very intelligent animals, uh, albeit very stubborn today, and didn't really want to come out. We had to go around and poke in his trap box there and see if we can... Um, yeah, the really dangerous snakes to handle have have trap boxes or shift boxes, so you can safely clean the enclosure without the animal uh, in the enclosure with you. Um, Is it venomous? Oh, king culvers are highly venomous, yeah. and they've got a lot of it. They're not as toxic as like the spectacle cobra. Mm -hmm. The spectacle cobra lethal dose is about. 10 milligrams. Um, his lethal dose is about 50 milligrams, but he packs about 600, where the spectacle cobra packs may be 50 milligrams. And you had him as a pet? No, he was. No, 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 no. None of these animals are pets. Oh. Uh, that's a misconception. These are, you know, uh, zoological specimens. Uh, oh, okay. I have a business where I import and breed venomous snakes for venom labs like George's and oh. zoos. A lot of my animals are at zoos all around the, the country. Oh. I'm internationally known. I am known as Viper Keeper on YouTube. Oh. Elvis, you old toad. <laughs> Come on over, say hello. Come on. Virtually all true cobras oh, yeah. will will uh, spread their hood. Do you have one here? Like, oh, there's several of them here. They all, they all will. Anything that says Naya as a genus name, N-A-J-A, -A, yeah. are true cobras. Oh, the the, the king cobra is, is not a true that cobra. If it felt threatened right here, if this monocle cobra would do that if it felt threatened. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. The people, people like to keep the monocle culvers just because they put on a great display. Um, I don't find them very interesting, but uh, uh, other people do. But everybody has their own taste and uh, uh, likes and dislikes, and who am I to say uh, uh, you're dumb for keeping monocle culvers? <laughs> Elvis, you old toad, come on, give the people a good show. This will be on my YouTube channel, so I told my people who watch my channel that I was going to visit Elvis. Little did I know he was going to be not very cooperative. <laughs> Well, I blew into his, his exhibit. We've been face to face many times. Maybe he recognized my scent and breath. You know, the amazing thing about any snake is that tongue brings uh, chemicals back into its mouth where it has a sensory organ, which is like a highly sophisticated uh, chemical detection laboratory like at a forensic laboratory. The chemical goes in and it, in his brain, in his, in his genes, he's got this catalog of chemicals. Snakes can bite a prey item and they can identify that that is the animal that they bit, not an animal that somebody else bit or wasn't bitten at all. Their chemo sensation is just uh, uh, some of the best on the planet. Uh, uh, they can 
really identify scents and compounds and and such. Um, and that's what they do. This is a King Cobra right here. That's a monitor. Oh, that's the King Cobra. Jeez, that's huge. Which actually used to be my snake. What's that? It used to be my snake. Oh, yeah? That's the one you're milking? Uh, George doesn't milk the snakes that are on display. Oh. There's no real market for King Cobra Venom in the United States. He basically milks snakes that go for anti-venom production, typically. Oh, okay. Like rattlesnakes, yeah. coral snakes, those sort of things. Where's that room that it's going? Where's, what's back in that hole? That oh, that's his trap box. That's where they secure him when they're gonna clean you the, the exhibit. Oh, so okay. they don't, a lot of these animals, it's best if you don't actually handle them um, because they're quite fast and quite dangerous. Um, the taipan used to be mine also, and that snake uh, is another very dangerous lethal snake. Um, uh, the lethal dose of this snake is about 50 milligrams for a human. The lethal dose for a taipan is probably one or two milligrams. Oh, wow. Um, that's a very toxic snake. It is sort of like a nuclear weapon. Uh, it, one drop of venom can kill over 100,000 mice. Wow. So where this snake, the venom, could kill mice, but probably not 100,000. What do they feed that reticulated python? Uh, I don't know exactly, but usually, you know, large rats or... Something so huge, it looks like a rat would do not much for it. Like... Well, yeah, sometimes they, they find other things uh, uh, to feed them something larger. Elvis, you're really not putting on a very good show, are you? King at the top of the yeah, line. Yeah, uh, uh, he. Um, I don't know if he's done it here. Um, George tells me he's pretty shy, and you know, I raised him from a hatchling, and he very seldom hood because he knew me. Um, uh, he's not a a true cobra, so he doesn't have much of a hood and doesn't really hood all that much. All right, well, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Well, Elvis, you're turning out to be a very uh, disappointing uh, visit. I came all this way, and you're not even coming up front to say hello, or at least not yet. Had to uh, sort of poke him out of his trap box. Uh, he was in his trap box at the rear of the enclosure, uh, not being sociable at all, and was huffing and puffing and uh, uh, being quite foul when we disturbed him and lifted the lid of the trap box. Uh, um, I sort of blew into it, wafted my scent, uh, touched the, uh, uh, the screen just to leave my scent behind, but it doesn't seem like it made any difference.